We are entering the first day of 2024 after a holiday and both SpaceX and Starbase are going to be busy again after quite a few days. I'm absolutely sure that the thing that will keep your attention the most at Starbase this time is still preparations for Starship Flight 3 with a very big question in mind. What will be the launch date of the Flight 3? So let's find the answers together in today's video. On December 29, 2023, SpaceX smashed a new record with the dual Starship static fire test of Booster 10 and Ship 28. Given that the gap between both is just one and a half hours, this demonstrated SpaceX's stage zero was healthy enough for a fast turnaround. Another point is the static test's duration for Booster 10 increased significantly compared to that of Booster 9, which just occurred just four months ago. Normally, SpaceX just does a static fire test for around 6 to 8 seconds, much shorter than that of NASA SLS with 8 minutes and 20 seconds. That's because SpaceX, unlike NASA, doesn't use flame diverters. It can only conduct short static fires. A longer duration would increase the risk of damaging the engines, for an example, through rocks and dust. However, in Booster's 10 case, they dare to push the OLM to its new frontier within 10 seconds. Fortunately, the vehicle and pad were still okay. The propellant loading was also speeded up with only roughly 50 minutes prior to the test. Clearly, the addition of recondenses and subchillers into the recent tag farm upgrades worked. It means they can cool the pipework much faster than before and speed up the propellant load process. The improvement of detanking's efficiency is given credit as well as in the case they do a full wet dress rehearsal or have a scrub at full propellant load, which means faster turnaround between launch attempts. Obviously, more tanks means more capacity, so starting with full tanks, you can scrub and reset to try again without waiting for refills. If the OLM can maintain its good performance, as it accurately and currently does, SpaceX will be likely to save more time in pre-flight tests, thus cutting down the preparation for Flight 3. That's about Stage 0. Now let's move on to the vehicle, particularly it is pre-flight test campaign. Have you ever felt like the preparation this time was less complicated than the previous two times? Yes, I think you're right. As we can see, SpaceX made a short test list for Ship 28, just including two cryo-approved tests, one spin prime test, and one static fire test. The testing timeline fells into three months of 2023, July, August, and December. After the static test of both Ship 28 and Booster 10 recently, the next up is some final work before integrated stack testing and then launch. On December 31 of last year, Booster 10 was lifted off the OLM following its static fire test on Friday to recheck some parts. Perhaps the day we see it stacking up against Ship 28 is not far off. By contrast, for Ship 24 and Ship 25, the amount of tests is larger. As I counted, Ship 24's pre-flight test consists of three cry-approved tests, six spin prime tests, and three static fire tests, not to mention numerous unknown tests, lasting from May to December 2022. Until Ship 25, things get a little simpler with five cry-approved tests, zero one spin prime test, and zero one static fire test with some other tests. The testing time is divided into two periods, from October to November 2022 and from May to June 2023. This difference in time is due to improvements to the vehicle. The Ship 24 is the first prototype to participate in the integrated flight testing, meaning no previous real flight data was recorded. For Ship 25, at least SpaceX gained information from Flight 1, but Ship 24 exploded early until Ship 28. The situation started to look much brighter because its predecessor performed quite well in Flight 2 showing that the ship was basically reliable. Thus, the new upgrades for Ship 28 mainly focuses on the hardware used in Artemis 3. Well, the sampler the process, the less time it takes. But before continuing, if you found this information useful, let's subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications bell so you never miss out on any of our upcoming SpaceX videos. And now, Let's go back to today's video. With positive signals about both infrastructure and Starship, 
SpaceX has enough basis to be confident about a launch in the first quarter of this year, as said by Starbase's general manager, Kathy Luders. Surely SpaceX will achieve that goal. But to talk about the exact time, we need to consider one more thing, the FAA approval, as we're all hoping for a faster and a faster launch cadence of Starship. And of course, it's probably going to be the United States government that slows things down for the first several launches. Currently, the FAA is overseeing an investigation into Flight 2 on November 18, 2023. Of course, they will not likely grant a license for Flight 3 until that investigation is complete and SpaceX has implemented any corrective actions that may be acquired, if any, even though the FAA stated that no injuries or damage to public property were reported. That doesn't mean they do not have any concerns. In fact, the FAA always has concerns if the whole launch isn't nominal, but the levels of concerns should be much less in time around because at least the launch pad survived. However, there was definitely some damage to the launch pad and more large chunks flying through the air, but not nearly as bad as the first flight. Although a couple of the large water tanks took some significant hits, with all the tanks being double shielded, hopefully that will be an easy fix. The FAA will not put much attention on. Some suppose that launch pad and tank integrity seem like a SpaceX problem not an FAA problem since they do not really affect the flight of the vehicle. Another opinion is that the SpaceX will conduct an unusual investigation to find out what happened, present those findings to the FAA along with the actions they are taking to correct them. As long as they do not make major changes to the launch pad, the FWS will need to reassess again, as they will most probably get another launch done within 90 days. It means that the Starship could fly 3rd in January, and it would be better at the end of January. This prediction was also agreed upon by another person who said that several steps were needed in the preparation process as follows. It has to follow the process of the data and identify areas of improvements, test fixes, build fixes into next vehicles, like either additional work to existing vehicles or new ones. Continue the expansion of the pad such as horizontal hot dog tanks, further improvement on today's experience, possible extension of the pad for the second tour, resolve any legal issues which may be difficult when the government shuts down in the first quarter of this year, and you may also want to resolve the ground station issue before the next flight to capture more data and finally fly again. At the current pace, technical and hardware work has basically been off the table. The remaining is mainly legal work, so why not hold out hope for the deadline at the end of this month? Nevertheless, some are concerned that the FAA and the FWS have recently become the target of litigation by many environmental groups. These environmental factions contest that both the FAA and the FWS failed in their obligations under the National Environmental Policy Act to thoroughly evaluate the environmental consequences of Starship launches. Frankly, it does not affect the FAA's investigation into Starship's second flight. Kelvin Colm, the FAA's Associate Administrator for Commercial Space Transportation, in an interview following the hearing, expressed optimism about the investigation's progress, indicating no foreseen major surprises. We're moving ahead pretty well. I do not suspect there will be any major surprises with the investigation, he said. The investigation is going well and progressing as expected. One more interesting tidbit. This week, Elon Musk will do a company talk for SpaceX to recap the talented team's amazing accomplishments of 2023 and describe exciting plans for 2024 and beyond. So, most likely he will just try to mention interesting news about the Starship's update for Flight 3 or even its exact launch date, for an example. Who knows? So, how about you? Do you think the Flight 3 launch date will fall at the end of this month? I really love hearing your interesting ideas, so do not hesitate to leave them all down below in the comments section right now. And that was a wrap for today's video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications bell, so you're always staying tuned with any of our upcoming space important updates. Your support is our driving force 
to continue delivering high-quality content at all times. Thank you, and we look forward to see you in the next time.